The moon. It's large, it's grey, it's frightening. And there's a lot of mystery surrounding it. So I decided to make my own iceberg about it since no one has ever done it before. Enjoy and don't forget to subscribe. The moon illusion is an age-old optical phenomenon where the moon appears larger near the horizon compared to when it's higher up in the sky. One proposed explanation involves atmospheric refraction and apparent distance perception. By some scholars, it's been suggested that the moon illusion results from the difficulty in perceiving objects at great heights. Some have proposed that the lack of intervening objects between the Earth and moon makes the perceived distance shorter, thus making the moon seem smaller. Another hypothesis focuses on relative size perception suggesting that the moon appears larger near the horizon because it's surrounded by objects with fine details, creating a contrast that makes it seem bigger. The moon illusion is also similar to the Ebbinghaus illusion, which is a visual illusion that involves the perception of relative size. In this illusion, a central circle surrounded by smaller circles appears larger than the same central circle surrounded by larger circles, even though the central circle remains physically constant in size. As a GTA addict, I think you just need to shoot at the moon a few times with a sniper rifle and it'll be back to normal. Faking the moon landing was deemed too expensive primarily due to technological limitations of the time. One major hurdle was replicating the unique lighting conditions on the moon's surface characterized by shadows cast by parallel sun rays with no diffusion. Achieving this effect on Earth would have required an immense amount of light, potentially millions of super bright lasers. However, lasers in 1969 were prohibitively expensive and only available in red. Moreover, even if advanced computer graphics had existed at the time, altering images with computers wasn't feasible in the 1960s. Orchestrating such a grand conspiracy would have required the cooperation of hundreds of thousands of NASA employees and coordination with numerous world leaders, including rival nations like Russia. These logistical challenges further rendered the idea of faking the moon landing implausible and too costly. The notion that Kubrick directed a fake moon landing is absurd. Familiarity with his filmmaking style would reveal that he would have strived to shoot on the actual moon to achieve perfection, rather than resorting to a simulated version. Full moons have nicknames. Throughout history, diverse cultures have named full moons, often drawing from Native American traditions. Essential for timekeeping, alongside the solar cycle, tribes designate 12 or 13 full moons yearly. These names, adopted by colonial Americans, hold cultural significance. For instance, January's wolf moon, references hungry wolves in midwinter. April's pink moon celebrates early wildflowers, and October's hunter's moon marks prime hunting season, etc. You get the idea. Nuking the Moon Project A119, also known as a study of lunar research flights, was a clandestine initiative devised by the United States Air Force in 1958. The plan aimed to detonate a nuclear bomb on the Moon primarily as a demonstration of American prowess during the Cold War space race. The project, led by Leonard Rifle and involving Carl Sagan, sought to investigate the effects of such an explosion on the lunar surface and its visibility from Earth. At the outset, the decision was made to employ a W-25 warhead, characterized by its compact size and modest 1.7 kiloton yield. In contrast to the significantly more powerful Little Boy bomb deployed over Hiroshima in 1945, which boasted yields ranging from 13 to 18 kilotons, the W-25 payload would be transported by a rocket toward the shaded portion of the moon, where it would be deliberately detonated upon impact. However, the endeavor was ultimately scrapped due to concerns over safety and potential public backlash. Another fact was the possible problem of nuclear fallout, which would affect future lunar research projects and moon colonization. I really want to know if the explosion would have been visible during daytime. Overview effect Rusty Schweikart, during his spacewalk on Apollo 9, described feeling intimately connected to the entire universe, a sentiment echoed by Edgar Mitchell during the Apollo 14 mission. Mitchell's experience of the overview effect, where he perceived the interconnectedness of all atoms in the universe, left an indelible mark on him. These experiences are not isolated incidents. Many astronauts have reported similar sensations since the 1970s. Neuroscientist Andy Newberg investigates whether this phenomenon is a psychological reality, possibly linked to changes in brain function. He notes a palpable psychological shift in astronauts upon their return to Earth akin to those who have experienced deep meditation. He also compares it to a euphoric state. Whether this effect stems from physiological changes in the brain or a deeper, undiscovered phenomenon, 
remains a subject of inquiry. Man, imagine dropping Lakeshore Drive on the moon. Libration. Yes, this is not an optical illusion. Lunar libration is the phenomenon in which the moon wobbles slightly as it orbits around Earth, even though it is tidally locked to us. Because of this, it's possible to observe more than half, around 60%, of the moon's surface from the ground. In fact, almost all astronomical bodies wobble, including our Sun. Although most of the time it's quite insignificant. Lunar rays. Lunar rays are like the moon's own cost cosmic gravity, painting streaks of intrigue across its surface. These rays, formed from material ejected during impacts, create striking patterns that stretch far from their crater origins, giving the lunar landscape a unique texture. Early hypotheses suggested they were salt deposits from evaporated water or volcanic ash. Rays can be visible at various wavelengths, appearing brighter than the surrounding surface due to their different reflectivity or thermal properties. The layering of rays over other surface features can provide clues about the craters age, as they are gradually affected by space weathering and other processes over time. On the Moon, rays are particularly prominent, with notable examples like Aristarchus, Copernicus and Tycho showcasing these distinctive features. Armstrong is misquoted. Neil Armstrong's famous quote, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, has been a subject of debate for decades. Initially, both Armstrong and NASA insisted that he said one small step for a man. However, subsequent analysis of the audio recordings suggested that the indefinite article A was not audible in the transmission mission. Recent research conducted by teams from Michigan State University and Ohio State University took a novel approach to analyzing the quote. They studied how people from Armstrong's native central Ohio pronounce for and for a. The study found that there are instances where for and for a sound similar, supporting Armstrong's claims that he meant to say for a man. In my opinion, the quote remains one of the most iconic moments in history regardless of the precise wording. Human waste. Dr. Alastair Gunn explains that during the Apollo missions, the landers were engineered to take off from the Moon at a specific weight. To compensate for the significant amount of Moon rocks being brought back to Earth, various items were jettisoned, including golf balls, cameras, boots, a gold-plated telescope and a total of 96 bags of human waste, comprising urine, feces and vomit. While not environmentally conscientious, this discarded material likely had no lasting impact on the lunar ecosystem. The extreme conditions of the Moon's surface would have prevented any microorganisms present in the waste from proliferating. However, some may have remained dormant or inactivated as spores. After half a century on the lunar landscape, the human waste, now likely reduced to dusty remnants, could offer valuable insights into microbial survival in space. Astrobiologists are eager to investigate whether any genetic mutations have occurred in these micro organisms due to the harsh lunar conditions or if they have persisted in a dormant state. I can't wait for Jeff Bezos to one day retrieve this waste for further study just like he did with the Apollo 11 rockets. The Moon Trees In January 1971, the Apollo 14 crew carried tree seeds for a NASA and the USFS project. These seeds, known as moon trees, were germinated by the Forest Service upon return representing species like loblolly pine, sycamore, sweet gum, redwood and dugong. Fur. Despite initial setbacks, the germination efforts succeeded, with the resulting seedlings distributed globally. The moon trees were planted across the US and internationally, including iconic locations like the White House and sites in Brazil, Switzerland and Japan. The now flourishing moon trees defied expectations of mutation from exposure to space radiation. Lunar Mare Lunar volcanism, active for billions of years, shaped the moon's landscape, particularly evident in the vast dark plains called Lunar Maria. Formed by ancient lava flows filling large impact basins around 3.8 to 3 billion years ago, these maria cover about 15% of the lunar surface. Despite their name, they are not bodies of water, but solidified lava fields, less reflective than the highlands due to iron content. Most are on the near side, named after earthly seas and states of mind. Their basalts lack water and feature unique elements, differing chemically from terrestrial ones. The concentration and distribution of these basalts, especially on the near side, remain debated. 
The fun fact is that Mare Orientalis means Eastern Sea, even though it's on the western side of the Moon's face. It was named using Earth-centric directions instead of Moon-centric, which were approved in the late 20th century. Literally a case of my left, not yours. Crypto Maria, also known as Cryptic Maria or Hidden Maria, are regions on the Moon's surface that exhibit characteristics similar to Lunar Maria, but lack the dark, smooth appearance typically associated with them. Instead, Crypto Maria appear lighter in color and may be more challenging to identify due to their subdued appearance. It is difficult to directly observe any ancient volcanic deposits on the Moon because the high impact flux during the early bombardment has buried many of these deposits. These enigmatic maria are believed to result from ancient volcanic activity that occurred on the Moon, similar to the processes that formed the lunar maria. Other factors, such as differences in lava composition, eruption dynamics or subsequent surface weathering, may have led to the distinctive appearance of Crypto Maria. Identifying Crypto Maria often requires detailed analysis of lunar surface features using high-resolution imaging and geological mapping techniques. Yeah, can't wait for the new cryptocurrency to be named after Crypto Maria. To the Moon, Theia Impact. Also known as the Giant Impact Hypothesis, suggests that Earth collided with a Mars-sized dwarf planet named Theia around 4.5 billion years ago resulting in the formation of the Moon. Analysis of lunar rocks in 2016 supported the theory of a direct hit during the impact, causing fragmentation and mixing of both bodies. Currently, the giant impact hypothesis is the favored explanation among astronomers for the formation of the Moon. Evidence supporting this theory includes the similarity in the orientation of the Moon's orbit to Earth's rotation, identical stable isotope ratios in lunar and terrestrial rocks, and the anomalously high angular momentum of the Earth-Moon system. Observing the smash would have been an insane spectacle. It said there's no space-time machine. Blue Moon Originating as a phrase denoting a rare occurrence, its modern usage now refers to the second full moon within a calendar month, occurring every two to three years. Contrary to its name, a blue moon rarely appears blue in color. Instead, it retains its usual hue, with true blue moons resulting from atmospheric conditions such as volcanic eruptions or wildfires. Examples include the Krakatoa eruption in 1883 and fires in Canada and Sweden in the 1950s. These events scatter red light, leaving the moon with a bluish tinge at genuinely uncommon sight. The Moon Treaty, formerly known as the Agreement Governing the Activities of States on the Moon and other celestial bodies, was established on December the 18th of 1979 with the objective of providing providing a legal framework for the exploration and use of celestial bodies in a manner that conforms to international law. Key provisions of the Moon Treaty include a ban on military use of celestial bodies, the establishment of an international regime for the responsible exploitation of natural resources, measures to prevent environmental harm and contamination, and the promotion of scientific research and exploration without discrimination. The treaty also allows for the designation of special scientific preserves and requires transparency in reporting activities related to the Moon. However, the lack of ratification by major spacefaring nations like the US, Russia and China has limited its relevance and effectiveness in international law. Only time will tell until someone stands up for lunar independence. 22 degree and 46 degree halos are atmospheric optical phenomena caused by light refraction through ice crystals encircling the Sun or Moon. Both exhibit color variation with reddish inner edges and bluish outer edges. Variances in ice crystal size and composition affect color intensity. The 22 degree halo, more common due to smaller hexagonal ice crystals, often precedes storms. In contrast, the 46 degree halo, requiring larger, less common ice crystals, lacks clear weather associations. The 46 degree halo is similar to but much larger than the fainter 22 degree halo. The 46 degree halo forms when sunlight enters randomly oriented hexagonal ice crystals through a prism face and exits through a hexagonal base. The 90 degree inclination between the two faces of the crystals causes the colors of the 46 degree halo to be more widely dispersed than those of the 22 degree halo. While both are mesmerizing, Spotting the rare 46-degree halo remains a wish for many sky gazers. The dark side of the moon 
doesn't exist. Yes, there is no permanently dark side of the moon. There is a far side of the moon, which never faces the Earth due to tidal locking. But the moon experiences a normal cycle of sunlight as it goes around. During a full moon, as observed from Earth, the far side of the moon is unlit, but during a new moon, when the moon is between the Earth and the Sun, the far side is fully lit but unobservable from the Earth. Earthshine Earthshine is illumination of the moon by sunlight reflected from the Earth. Just as the Earth receives light from the moon, the moon can receive light from the Earth. When the moon is in its crescent face, part of its surface facing away from the sun is dimly lit by sunlight reflected from our planet. The Earthshine phenomenon allows us to see faint details on the otherwise shadowed part of the moon's surface. What's cool is that at any given phase the Earthshine reaching the moon is more than 40 times brighter than the moonlight we are accustomed to on Earth. Lunar Corona Have you ever marveled at the captivating rings encircling the moon on a cloudless night? This mesmerizing spectacle is referred to as a lunar corona. When wispy clouds swiftly glide in front of a radiant moon, they give rise to a striking presentation of a luminous disk enveloped by subtle hued rings. Lunar coronae are more frequently observed compared to their solar counterparts. They manifest when clouds are sufficiently thin, allowing each individual corona light ray that reaches our eyes to be dispersed or diffracted by a single droplet. The entire corona comprises numerous droplets, each independently scattering the moonlight. As clouds clouds drift over the moon, the corona size may fluctuate as it is shaped by droplets of varying sizes. Intriguingly, smaller droplets tend to yield larger coronae, complete with aureoles spanning several moon diameters. Although lunar corona presents a breathtaking spectacle, it's crucial to recognize its distinction from a 22-degree halo, which is notably larger and can also encircle the moon. The creation of a corona does not hinge on any specific particle. Even ice crystals in high-altitude clouds or pollen grains carried by the wind can contribute to this atmospheric marvel. The moon used to be larger. It's been revealed to scientists that, most likely, the moon originally orbited around 10 times closer to the Earth than its current distance. Just picture gazing up at the night sky and seeing the moon 10 times larger. According to computer simulations, there's even a possibility that the moon was positioned 12 to 19 times closer, within a mere 20,000 to 30,000 km range, compared to its current 384,000 km distance. Remarkably, the moon continues to drift farther away, due to an exchange of energy resulting from the Earth's rotation and tidal bulges. The moon moves approximately 3.78 centimeters farther away each year. To put this into perspective, that's roughly equivalent to the rate at which your fingernails grow. Now we are in the depths of the tier 2, starting off with the moon is dull. Despite its appearance, the moon is relatively dim compared to other cosmic entities. Its brightness is accentuated by its proximity to Earth and the darkness of the surrounding environment at night. Contrary to common belief, the moon is among the least reflective bodies in our solar system. Images from the Discover spacecraft depict both Earth and the moon illuminated by equal sunlight, revealing Earth's superior brightness. The visibility of celestial bodies is determined by their capacity to reflect light. The intensity of reflection varies depending on surface materials and roughness. Generally, surfaces with high reflectivity like clouds appear brighter, whereas rocky surfaces such as the Moon appear dimmer due to low reflectivity. Triton, a moon of Neptune with an 85% albedo or reflectivity, would appear significantly brighter if it orbited Earth. In contrast, the moon's low albedo of 12% is comparable to old asphalt. Some may say it's one giant molded piece of green cheese. Amazon CEO recovers Apollo 11 engine. Jeff Bezos funded a secret expedition to recover Apollo rocket engines from the ocean floor. The engines, used in the historic Apollo 11 moon landing, were submerged after their fuel was spent. Despite extensive corrosion and the absence of visible serial numbers, the conservation team at the Kansas Cosmosphere and Space Center identified one engine part marked unit number 2044 as having flown on Apollo 11. The team's meticulous work included cleaning and inspecting various components of the F1 engines. The conservation process, expected to take two years, aims to prepare the artifacts for
for public display. Ownership of the conserved engines remains with NASA, with plans for exhibition at institutions like the National Air and Space Museum and possibly the Museum of Flight in Seattle. They say one man's trash is another man's treasure, but not all finders end up being keepers, unfortunately. Wright Flyer For his lunar journey, Neil Armstrong took two components of the Wright Flyer, which was the first plane ever created. The muslin, sourced from the left wing of the 1903 Flyer, and the wood from its left propeller, were key artifacts. Armstrong coordinated with the National US Air Force Museum to acquire these items, arranging to bring them along for his historic mission. Basically, each of the astronauts of the Apollo 11 mission was allowed to carry a personal preference kit or PPK. The PPK served as a modernized pouch for astronomers, resembling a Teflon-coated lunchbox in size. Armstrong opted to include segments of the right flyer in his pouch, while the contents of the rest remain a mystery. Anaxagoras' Exile Anaxagoras, an ancient Greek philosopher, faced exile for asserting that the Moon was a rocky body, contradicting prevailing beliefs about its divine nature. Despite his accurate explanations of lunar phases and eclipses, his ideas clashed with the religious and political interests in Athens. Persecuted for his association with influential figures and his unorthodox views, he was ultimately sentenced to death, later commuted to exile. Despite his banishment, Anaxagoras' contributions to astronomy endure, with a lunar crater named in his honor. American flag blown over. Each Apollo mission that successfully landed on the moon included the planting of a flag. However, during the Apollo 11 mission, deploying the flag presenting a challenge. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin encountered difficulty inserting the pole into the lunar surface, managing to penetrate it only about 7 inches deep. Interestingly, upon stepping away from the flag, they found it could stand on its own. Subsequent analysis revealed that lunar dust possesses a distinct profile from terrestrial dust. While Earth's dust has rounded edges, lunar dust features sharp edges, causing it to catch against itself and hinder the insertion of objects. Buzz Aldrin noted that the Apollo 11 flag, positioned approximately 8.2 meters from the center line of the Eagle landing craft, was blown over by the exhaust blast during takeoff. You could say it's the only one in history to have been mooned by its own rocket. This incident prompted later missions to place the flags at greater distances from the lunar module. Bailey's beads are features of lunar limb topography during total and annular solar eclipses. These phenomena occur as the moon's rugged terrain allows beads of sunlight to shine through in some areas while obscuring them in others. Named after Francis Bailey, who elucidated their nature in 1836, these beads, along with the dazzling diamond ring effects, create a mesmerizing spectacle. The topography of the moon's surface, with its mountains, craters and valleys, plays a crucial role in the formation of these phenomena, with astronomers able to predict their occurrence with relative precision. However, observing Bailey's beads and the diamond ring effect requires caution as the photosphere remains visible and can cause eye damage without proper protection. With all potential risks eliminated, witnessing these fleeting moments of celestial beauty during a solar eclipse must be a truly unforgettable experience. The lunar magma ocean is a molten rock layer hypothesized to have existed on the Moon's surface after its formation around 4.5 billion years ago, following a giant impact with another planetary body. Chemical composition, depth and temperature influenced its initial state with estimated depths ranging from 100 kilometers to the Moon's radius. Olivine and orthopyroxene likely crystallized first, followed by less dense minerals like plagioclase forming the Moon's crust. The lunar magma ocean may have persisted for tens to hundreds of millions of years after the Moon's formation, with varying estimates depending on lunar sample ages. Failed Soviet Lunar Program The Soviet Union embarked on lunar programs during the 1960s aiming to rival the US Apollo program. Officially denying competition, they secretly pursued two initiatives. Crude lunar flybys launched by Proton-K rockets and crewed lunar landings launched via the N-1 rocket. The Soviet Union's failure in the moon race stemmed from a myriad of issues. Systemic challenges encompassed organizational deficiencies, coordination issues among entities, and subpar quality control in manufacturing. Mismanagement and reliance on outdated methodologies impeded progress, 
exacerbated by the rigid structure of the Soviet five-year plans, which hindered adaptability. Internal disagreement on supporting manned spaceflight, particularly moon missions, delayed project initiation and resulted in insufficient funding and resources. Staff fatigue, demoralization from failures and instances of misfortune compounded the challenges. Personal incompetence, including ineffective leadership after chief designer Korolev's demise in 1966 due to kidney condition brought on by his detention in the Soviet prison camps, worsened the situation. After the US achieved milestones like the first crewed lunar orbit in 1968 and the first moon landing in 1969, alongside setbacks including the several N-1 rocket failures, the Soviet endeavors were terminated. Bureaucracy triumph. Even the most extraordinary voyages are tethered to the mundane rituals of our earthly existence. Fifty years ago, amidst the jubilation of their return from the lunar frontier, the intrepid Apollo 11 astronauts found found themselves confronting the banality of customs procedures. As Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins touched down on July the 24th of 1969, they were met not only by the embrace of gravity but also by the paperwork of international travel. In a tongue-in-cheek gesture, the astronauts declared their celestial cargo, moon rocks, lunar dust and other extraterrestrial treasures upon landing at the Honolulu airport in Hawaii. Their customs form, now a relic of spacefare in history, humorously detailed their flight route, which included a pit stop on the lunar surface. Logo on the Moon In 2012, thousands gathered on the rooftops to witness PepsiCo's historic journey into space. Contrary to false rumors circulating on social media by Russia Today and Iranian websites for days, which suggested PepsiCo would utilize high-powered lasers to project their logo onto the moon, the anticipated spectacle never materialized. Some people had raised doubts questioning why major news outlets had not covered the story, but others brushed off the concerns attributing the lack of coverage to international news agencies' reluctance to inadvertently advertise for Pepsi. Some of those who fell for the hoax sought solace in the taste of their rival's beverage, indulging in cans of Coca-Cola as a form of revenge. The Selenian summit is the highest spot on the moon, similar to Mount Everest on Earth. It's about 10,786 meters above the average level of the Moon, which makes it almost 20% higher than Mount Everest. Even though how we measure height on the Moon is a bit different as there's no sea level, since it was found in 2010 by the LRO teams, no other place on the Moon has been measured taller than this region. As it is located on the opposite side of the Moon, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter used radar imaging techniques to determine the height. Mons Huygens is the Moon's tallest mountain, but but not the highest place on the Moon. It is about 5,500 meters high and is located in the Montes Apenninus. This mountain range was formed by the impact that created Mare Imbrium. The mountain was named after the Dutch astronomer, mathematician and physician Christian Huygens. Lunar Rills A rill is a long, narrow depression on the Moon's surface resembling a channel. These features can span several kilometers in width and hundreds of kilometers in length. The term has also been used informally to describe similar structures on various celestial bodies such as Mars, Venus and several moons all sharing a structural resemblance. The precise formation mechanisms of rills remain undetermined. Leading theories include lava channels, collapsed lava tubes, near-surface dike intrusion, pyroclastic clouds, subsidence of lava-covered basin and crater floors, and tectonic extension. Lunar lava tubes, remnants of ancient volcanic activity, offer intriguing opportunities for exploration and potential habitation. Formed from basaltic lava flows, these tubes serve as natural conduits beneath the lunar surface. The Marius Hills region and the Hadley Rill are prime examples, with the former showcasing a 65-meter-wide pit discovered by NASA's LRO. Moreover, lunar lava tubes offer promising prospects for human colonization, providing shelter from cosmic radiation and extreme temperature fluctuations. With potential diameters exceeding 300 meters, these tunnels could accommodate habitats, mining operations and scientific research facilities strategically located near resources and communication channels. I wonder what naughty surprises may be hiding in those tubes. A lunar eclipse occurs when the Moon moves into the Earth's shadow, darkening its surface. This event happens approximately every six months during a full Moon phase when the Moon's orbital plane aligns with the Earth's orbit plane. During a total lunar eclipse, when the Moon is completely obscured by the Earth, it takes on a reddish hue due to the Rayleigh scattering of blue light by the Earth's atmosphere. 
similar to the coloring of sunrises and sunsets. Unlike solar eclipses, which are visible from limited regions, lunar eclipses can be observed from anywhere on Earth's night side. Total lunar eclipses can endure for nearly two hours, longer than total solar eclipses, as the moon's shadow is comparatively smaller. Only one side of the moon is visible. This entry refers to tidal locking, which is a phenomenon observed between two astronomical bodies in close orbit where one body's rotation rate matches its orbital period, resulting in the same side always facing its partner. This synchronization occurs due to gravitational forces between the bodies, gradually slowing one's rotation until it matches its orbit. This process is not exclusive to moons. Binary systems like Pluto and Charon also exhibit tidal locking. Over millions of years, tidal locking modifies orbits and rotation rates through energy exchange and dissipation. The locked body may exhibit libration, minor oscillations, allowing some variability in what is visible. My ex was just as clingy, he wouldn't even let me turn away for a moment. The lunar orbit is gradually expanding due to the phenomenon known as tidal acceleration. As the Moon exerts a gravitational force on the Earth, it causes a bulge in the Earth's oceans, which creates a tidal force that slows down the Earth's rotation. Consequently, angular momentum is transferred from the Earth's rotation to the Moon's orbit, causing the Moon to move slightly farther away from the Earth over time. This process leads to a gradual increase in the Moon's semi-major axis, or the average distance between the Earth and the Moon. The laser engine experiments have shown that the Moon is indeed spiraling away from the Earth at an average rate of about 1.5 inches per year, so just as Michael Jackson, the moon is slowly moonwalking away. Mascons, short for mass concentrations, are regions of a planet's or moon's crust that exhibit significant positive gravity anomalies compared to the surrounding areas. One of the key features of mascons is that they can alter the local gravitational field enough to affect the orbits of satellites or spacecraft in their vicinity, causing satellites to eventually crash onto the surface if left uncorrected. Understanding their distribution and effects is crucial for planning trajectories and and ensuring the stability of spacecraft in lunar or planetary orbits. Mescons are like celestial speed bumps, except they mess with satellite orbits instead of your car's suspension. Mare Imbrium is a vast lava plain formed by basaltic lava flooding the giant crater left by a protoplanet collision around 3.9 billion years ago. With a diameter of approximately 1,146 kilometers, it's one of the largest craters in the solar system. It has been a focal point for various lunar missions, including both robotic and crewed missions like Luna 17, Apollo 15 and Chang'e 3. Mare Imbrium serves as a landmark for lunar observations from Earth, visible to the naked eye and often featured in traditional lunar imagery. Lunar water, once thought confined to polar ice, is now known to exist across the Moon's surface and within its atmosphere. Discovered by Sophia in 2020, even sunlit areas hold low concentrations of water molecules. Chemically bonded hydrates and hydroxides hint at its potential for sustaining human presence. NASA's Ice Mining Experiment 1 aims to assess lunar water's quantity and accessibility. Its origins may trace to impacts from water-rich celestial bodies or on-site generation via solar-wind interactions with lunar minerals. While the Moon likely hosted liquid water billions of years ago, warm, pressurized regions within its interior could still harbor it. Moonquakes are seismic events that occur on the Moon's surface. They were first discovered unexpectedly by seismometers placed on the Moon by Apollo astronauts. These moonquakes are distinct from earthquakes on Earth and are believed to be primarily caused by tidal forces between the Earth and the Moon, rather than tectonic plate movement. There are several categories of moonquakes, including deep moonquakes and shallow events. Deep moonquakes, which tend to occur in clusters, are caused by tidal forces forces with Earth, while shallow events have tectonic origins. Other sources of seismic activity on the Moon include meteorite impacts and artificial signals from lunar modules. Why should Earth have all the fun? The Moon deserves a little jiggle too. The opposition surge is an interesting phenomenon where a sudden increase in brightness is observed when a rough surface or object with many particles is illuminated from directly behind the observer. This phenomenon is particularly pronounced on airless bodies in the solar system, like the Moon or asteroids, where it's caused by two main physical mechanisms, shadow hiding 
and coherent backscatter. Let me explain shadow hiding. At a phase angle of 0 degrees, all shadows disappear and the object is fully illuminated. As the angle of reflection approaches the angle at which the light's rays hit the surface, like when the sun and the object are close to opposition from the viewpoint of the observer, the intrinsic brightness of the surface reaches its maximum. This effect is especially noticeable on rough surfaces where small pores and pits that would otherwise be in shadow become illuminated when the observer is nearly in line with the source of illumination. Cohere Coherent backscattering is a term used to describe increased brightness during opposition when the size of scatterers on the surface of the body is comparable to the wavelength of the light and the distance between scattering particles is greater than a wavelength. Reflected light is enhanced at narrow angles due to coherent backscattering, causing an increase in brightness when combined with emitted light. I just find it very interesting that there are so many optical phenomena people usually don't get to see. Earth's other moons. Many astronomers have claimed to have discovered extra moons over the last 200 years. As of today, there are various types of near-Earth objects including quasi-satellites, Earth trojans and temporary satellites. These objects have orbits that may appear similar to moons but are not stable enough to qualify as true moons. Earth trojans are asteroids or other celestial bodies that share Earth's orbit around the Sun, residing at the Lagrange points L4 and L5, which are stable points in Earth's orbit. While they may share Earth's orbital path, they do not orbit Earth Earth directly and thus are not considered moons. Additionally, dust clouds known as Kordiluski clouds orbit Earth at Lagrange points. As of 2023, Earth had seven known quasi-satellites and more than 25 companions, each with its own peculiar orbiting pattern, with the largest aside from the Moon being 5 kilometers wide. I'd just like to make it clear that quasi-satellites have orbits that are not fully controlled by the gravitational pull of the planet. They orbit the Sun in a manner similar to the planet they are associated with, but do not orbit the planet itself. The solar wind composition experiment was conducted during the Apollo program missions with the primary goal of analyzing and sampling the solar wind outside the Earth's magnetosphere. It aimed to provide the first definitive isotopic measurements of solar material which were crucial for understanding the composition and properties of the solar wind. The experiment was designed and proposed by a Swiss team. It involved deploying a 1x4.6-foot sheet of ultra-pure aluminum foils with platinum metal segments added in the case of Apollo 16 on the lunar surface using a telescopic pole. This sheet was exposed to the Sun to measure the ion types and energies of the solar wind over various durations ranging from 77 minutes to 45 hours across different Apollo missions. At the end of the exposure, Exposure, the foil was detached, placed in a protective bag and brought back to Earth for analysis. The experiment was deemed successful and provided accurate isotopic compositions of helium, neon and argon in the solar wind. The lost cosmonauts, also known as phantom cosmonauts, are individuals at the center of a conspiracy theory suggesting that the Soviet Union concealed the deaths of some cosmonauts who perished in outer space missions prior to Yuri Gagarin's historic flight. However, Evidence supporting these claims is generally regarded as inconclusive and several cases have been confirmed as hoaxes. To be honest, this whole topic deserves its own video. Bacteria on camera. Arguably, the strict no-contamination code can't be executed to perfection, as during the Apollo 12 mission in 1969, a live Streptococcus mitis bacteria were discovered on the camera brought back from the Moon. However, there is debate over whether this bacteria actually survived on the Moon or if it was a result of contamination after the camera returned to Earth. A moon dog is an atmospheric optical phenomenon that consists of a bright spot to one or both sides of the moon. They are exactly analogous to sun dogs. Moon dogs belonging to the halo family result from moonlight refracted by hexagonal plate-shaped ice crystals within cirrus or cirrus stratus clouds. Typically, they manifest as dim patches of light positioned approximately 22 degrees to the left and right of the moon, matching its altitude above the horizon. These occurrences may coincide with 22 degree halos. Moon dogs are less common than sun dogs due to the requirement of a sufficiently bright moon typically a quarter moon or beyond for their observation. Their subdued brightness means they exhibit minimal color perception to the naked human eye as they lack the intensity to stimulate the eye's cone cells. Sometimes the lonely moon needs sidekicks too. Fallen astronaut controversy. The fallen astronaut is a 3.5-inch aluminum sculpture created by Belgian artist Paul von Hoydonk. It was placed on the moon by the crew of Apollo 15 in 1971. 
intended to commemorate astronauts and cosmonauts who died in the pursuit of space exploration. The controversy surrounding it stems from discrepancies in the agreement between astronaut David Scott and Van Hoydonk regarding the sculpture's purpose and commercialization. Scott intended it as a memorial for fallen astronauts, while Van Hoydonk, the creator of the sculpture, claimed it represented all mankind and denied knowing it would be used as a memorial. The creator's attempt to sell replicas led to controversy, with NASA opposing the commercial exploitation of the US government's space program. It's truly one small step for art, one giant leap for a cosmic controversy. A lunar eclipse saved Christopher Columbus. Christopher Columbus, facing starvation and the hostility of the Arawak Indians on the island of Jamaica, utilized his knowledge of a lunar eclipse to his advantage. Consulting his almanac, he predicted the lunar eclipse of February the 29th in 1504. When the eclipse occurred, Columbus, aware of the Arawak's fear of celestial events, used it to his advantage. The Arawaks, witnessing the eclipse and interpreting it as a sign of Columbus's power or anger, were frightened and rushed to provide provisions to appease him and his crew. This clever manipulation of the Arawaks' beliefs helped Columbus and his crew survive by securing much-needed food supplies. Columbus really knew how to eclipse his problems. Now we are in tier 3. Sun and Moon are same size. Although the Sun's diameter is approximately 400 times larger than that of the Moon, it is also about 400 times farther away from Earth. This alignment results in both celestial bodies appearing nearly the same size when viewed from our planet. As a consequence of this alignment, observers on Earth can occasionally witness total solar eclipses. However, it's essential to note that the Sun and Moon are not always exactly the same size in the sky. Variations in the Moon's distance from Earth over its orbit cause slight changes in its apparent size, leading to different types of solar eclipses, including annular eclipses where the Sun appears as a ring around the Moon. As the Moon's distance from Earth is gradually increasing over time, meaning its apparent size in the sky is gradually diminishing. This change will eventually result in all solar eclipses being annular rather than total. Bishop of the Moon Yes, according to an obscure law from 1917, the Moon is technically under the jurisdiction of the Diocese of Orlando, Florida. This happened when the Apollo 11 mission launched from Cape Canaveral, which falls under the purview of the Diocese of Orlando. As a result, Bishop William Donald Borders, who was the Bishop of Orlando at the time, was humorously referred to as the Bishop of the Moon. However, this is more of a symbolic or humorous title as there is no actual population or life on the Moon to have jurisdiction over. A True Story by Lucian of Samosata is a 2nd century AD novella that stands out for its satirical approach and its early incorporation of science fiction elements. The story is a whimsical journey filled with fantastical events and creatures, serving as a parody of ancient tales that presented mythical events as truth. The plot follows Lucian and his companions as they embark on a series of absurd adventures, including traveling to outer space, encountering alien life forms, participating in warfare on the moon, and exploring strange lands such as islands of cheese and seas of milk. Along the way, Lucian encounters mythological figures and engages in philosophical discussions. What makes a true story interesting is its pioneering role in the science fiction genre. It predates modern science fiction by centuries and includes themes such as space travel, encounters with extraterrestrial beings, and colonization of other planets. Arguably, Lucian's tale of interplanetary warfare makes Star Wars look like a dispute over who gets the last cookie. The South Pole Aitken Basin is a colossal impact crater situated on the far side of the Moon. It spans approximately 2,500 kilometers in diameter, which is roughly the distance from Ohio to Cuba, and boasts depths ranging from 6.2 to 8.2 kilometers, making it one of the largest known impact craters in the entire solar system. What makes it particularly intriguing is its status as the largest, oldest and deepest basin recognized on the Moon. While it was initially thought to have formed through high-velocity impact. Simulations suggest a low-velocity projectile 200 kilometers in diameter, striking at a shallow angle and hence not digging very deeply into the moon. Tidal power, also known as tidal energy, is derived from harnessing the energy generated by the natural rise and fall of tides in oceans and seas caused by the moon. Unlike wind and solar energy, 
Tidal power offers a higher level of predictability due to the consistent and cyclical nature of tides. However, its widespread use has been limited by factors such as high initial costs and the scarcity of suitable locations with sufficiently high tidal ranges or flow velocities. Historically, tide mills were utilized in Europe and North America to harness tidal energy for milling grain. These mills used water wheels turned by the incoming and outgoing tides to produce mechanical power. The concept of using tidal energy to generate electricity dates back to the 19th century, with the introduction of turbines powered by falling water and spinning mechanisms. The Rance Tidal Power Station in France, operational since 1966, was the world's first large-scale tidal power plant. It was surpassed in output by South Korea's power station, which became operational in 2011. The station utilizes seawall defense barriers equipped with turbines to generate electricity, demonstrating the advancement and potential of tidal energy technology on a large scale. Sturusa in Nepal. This entry refers to the article where it stated that on a trip to Nepal, Apollo astronaut Sturusa met Nepalese who believe the spirits of their dead reside on the moon. Rusa could not understand why a few of the local citizens treated him like a god, nor why they were distressed when he told them he saw no one else on the moon. Finally, Rusa never set foot on the moon. He was command module pilot and stayed in orbit several miles above the lunar surface while Shepard and Mitchell landed. No wonder Rusa was called a liar by the locals. Collins surgery. Michael Collins underwent an anterior cervical discectomy with placement of an iliac bone graft. The the procedure was necessitated by Collins' development of symptoms of cervical myelopathy during training for the Apollo 8 mission in 1968. The interesting aspect of Michael Collins' surgery is how it altered the course of space exploration history. Initially slated for the Apollo 8 mission, Collins was replaced by James Lovell due to his cervical myelopathy. This change not only affected the rotation of astronauts, but also resulted in Collins being a part of the Apollo 11 mission, which famously landed humans on the moon for the first time. I just find it incredible that healthcare was already advanced enough in the 60s that a person could land on the moon after such a surgery. Most Isolated Human Al Warden, the command module pilot of Apollo 15, earned the title of the most isolated human being due to his unique experience in lunar orbit. While his fellow astronauts explored the moon's surface, Warden remained in orbit, reaching a maximum distance of 2,235 miles away from his comrades. This distance, coupled with being on the other side of the moon, rendered communication with both Earth and his fellow astronauts impossible. This isolation led to his inclusion in the Guinness book of world records. Warden, however, embraced his solitary experience, describing his time alone in the spacecraft endeavor as three wonderful days. As a former fighter pilot accustomed to solitude, he found solace in the silence, even remarking that not having to communicate with Houston while on the backside of the moon was the best part of his flight. A hollow moon is a pseudoscientific hypothesis suggesting that Earth's moon is either entirely hollow or contains a substantial interior space. Supporters of the hollow moon hypothesis often point to factors like the moon's lower density compared to Earth and anecdotal evidence like the moon ringing like a bell during certain seismic events. The hollow moon idea has been explored in various works of fiction, such as Wells' The First Man in the Moon, where he describes a hollow moon inhabited by fictional insectoids. However, mainstream scientific understanding based on seismic observation, gravitational measurements and the analysis of lunar composition indicates that the Moon is a solid body with a thin crust, extensive mantle and a small, dense core, probably not as hollow as a conspiracy theorist's mind. A crater chain is a series of impact craters arranged along the surface of an astronomical body such as a moon or a planet. These chains are often formed by the impact of a fragmented body such as a comet that breaks up due to tidal forces. The resultant smaller objects follow roughly the same orbit, creating a line of impact craters. I wish I could play such bowling with comets. The Eddington experiment was a pivotal moment in scientific history organized by British astronomers Frank Dyson and Arthur Eddington. The experiment aimed to observe the total solar eclipse of May the 29th of 1919, from two locations, the West African island of Principe and the Brazilian town of Sobrel. The significant lies in the experiment's attempt to measure the gravitational deflection of light from another star passing near the Sun. Einstein had predicted this deflection in his 1911 paper, but it was based on an incomplete version of general relativity. The actual measurement of the deflection during the eclipse confirmed Einstein's revised prediction 
prediction, which he formulated after completing his theory in 1915. Moon bounce, also known as Earth-Moon-Earth -Earth communication, is a radio communication technique where radio waves are transmitted from Earth to the Moon and then reflected back to Earth for reception. Initially proposed in 1940, it gained traction during World War II for defense and communication purposes. Although communication satellites made this technique obsolete in the 1960s, it has since been adopted by amateur radio operators as a hobby, as radio waves propagate in vacuum at the speed of light, which is roughly 300,000 km per second, it takes approximately 2.5 seconds for the waves to propagate to the Moon and back to Earth. Check out this 2009 transmission from Italy to Netherlands via Moon Bounce. The transmission is shifted up in pitch, slightly to compensate for the Doppler effect. Mike, 73, bye -bye. <laughs> Notice how at the end of the transmission you can hear the echo of the signal returning from the Moon at a lower pitch due to the Doppler effect. Pretty cool, huh? The Moon is made of green cheese is a proverbial expression that refers to a fanciful belief that the Moon is composed of cheese. Its origins lie in various folkloric motifs found in different cultures, where simpletons mistake the reflection of the Moon in water for a round cheese wheel. The phrase green cheese in this context may refer to young, unripe cheese or cheese with a greenish tint. Despite its nonsensical nature, the idea has persisted in children's folklore and popular culture. The crack line on the moon, often referred to as the splitting of the moon, is a phenomenon mentioned in Islamic tradition and attributed to the Islamic prophet Muhammad. In contemporary times, there has been a debate over whether certain features on the moon's surface, such as Rima Ariadeus, could be interpreted as evidence of the moon having once been split. This interpretation circulated within the Muslim online community after a NASA photograph of Rima Ariadeus became available. However, NASA clarified that these features, including Rima Ariadeus, are lunar rills, which are geological faults on the Moon's surface. Additionally, experts have stated that there is no scientific evidence to support the claim that the Moon was once split into two or more parts and then reassembled. Based on the research, I concluded that there was no splitting of the Moon, but a misinterpretation of yet another solar eclipse event. Antipodal tides Did you know that the ocean bulge doesn't protrude only towards the Moon during tides? Yes, there are sublunar and antipodal bulges. Antipodal tides are primarily caused by the gravitational forces exerted by the Moon on different parts of the Earth. These forces result in the deformation of the Earth's shape, leading to the formation of tidal bulges both on the side of the Earth Earth facing the Moon and on the opposite side, known as the antipodal point. The gravitational attraction of the Moon is strongest at the point nearest to it, also called the submoon point, and weakest at the antipodal point. This difference in gravitational force leads to the formation of the antipodal bulge. Additionally, another explanation suggests that the centrifugal force resultant from the Earth's rotation around the Earth Moon bare center also contributes to the formation of antipodal tides. The Bay of Fundy, located between the Canadian provinces of New Brunswick, Week and Nova Scotia, as well as touching a small portion of Maine in the United States, is renowned for having the highest tidal range in the world. Its tidal range measures about 16 meters, while the global average is merely 1 meter. The bay experiences semi-diurnal tides, meaning it has two high tides and two low tides each day. What makes the Bay of Fundy particularly fascinating is its tidal resonance, created by its funnel-like shape which amplifies the power of the tides flowing through the channel. In a single 12-hour tidal cycle, an astonishing 100 billion tons of water flow in and out of the bay, equivalent to twice the combined total flow of all the rivers in the world over the same period. Moreover, many rivers draining into the Bay of Fundy exhibit unique tidal phenomena such as tidal bores, where a wavefront of the incoming tide bores its way upriver against the normal flow. It looks pretty cool. I wouldn't advise surfing it as it may get very dangerous. Moon jiggling Several Reddit users reported witnessing the moon appearing to move erratically or shake in the sky. One user suggested a scientific explanation attributing the phenomenon to atmospheric refraction caused by turbulent layers of differently heated gases in the Earth's atmosphere. According to this explanation, when observing the Moon through the atmosphere, especially near the horizon where more atmosphere is traversed, the Moon may appear to jiggle due to the varying densities of gases. However, some users proposed ideas involving glitches in the matrix or even supernatural influences. Cosmic ray visual phenomena, also known as light flashes experienced by astronauts in space, are spontaneous visual perceptions of light in the eyes that occur outside the Earth's magnetosphere, particularly notable during missions like the Apollo program. 
These phenomena are believed to be caused by high-energy charged particles known as cosmic rays interacting with the astronauts' visual systems. Several hypotheses exist, including Cherenkov radiation, direct interaction with the optic nerve or visual centers in the brain. Astronauts have reported seeing flashes in different colors, shapes and motion patterns. The colors range from white and blue to yellow, green, orange and red, with some variation depending on the mission context. Shapes reported include spots, stars, streaks, blobs and comets, each with different frequencies of occurrence. Additionally, astronauts have noted motion associated with these flashes, ranging from directional movement across the visual field to various patterns like sideways, diagonal or random motion. Fake Lunar Regolith A lunar regolith simulant is a material created on Earth to mimic the chemical, mechanical and engineering properties of lunar regolith. These simulants are crucial for researchers who want to study the handling, excavation, transportation and utilization of lunar regolith as actual samples of lunar regolith are scarce and often contaminated by exposure to Earth's atmosphere. Early simulants used before the Apollo program were made from crushed terrestrial rocks but often had properties different from actual lunar soil. The surprising nature of the Moon's fine-grained, sharp dust grains became apparent only after the Apollo missions. Now we're getting into the entries of the Tier 4. 51st State Proposition Newt Gingrich, who is an American politician, proposed to make the Moon the 51st state. It was part of his broader vision for space exploration and colonization. Gingrich, a self-professed space enthusiast, believed that proposing grandiose ideas like lunar colonization would capture the imagination of the American people and galvanize support for the space program. Soviet medals were symbolic objects carried by the Apollo 11 astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin during their historic mission to the Moon. These medals were intended to honor the memory of Soviet cosmonauts who had died in the pursuit of space exploration. Specifically, the astronauts carried medals commemorating Vladimir Komarov, who tragically perished in the Soyuz 1 spacecraft in 1967, and Yuri Gagarin, the first human to orbit the Earth, who died in an aircraft accident in 1968. More impressive than moon landing. Apollo 13 was a significant event in space exploration history. Launched in 1970, it was meant to be the third manned mission to land on the moon. However, an oxygen tank explosion in the service module two days into the mission forced the crew to abort the lunar landing and focus on returning safely to Earth. Despite facing numerous challenges including limited power, water shortages and a chilly cabin, the crew managed to improvise solutions with the help of mission control. Subsequent investigations found fault with the pre-flight testing of the oxygen tank and the use of combustible materials inside it. The story of Apollo 13 has captured the public's imagination and has been dramatized multiple times, including in the acclaimed 1995 film Apollo 13 and in literature such as the memoir co-authored by mission commander Jim Lovell. Jim Lovell's interview incident Astronaut Jim Lovell was asked if he would go on another space flight after an explosion almost killed him and his crew of Apollo 13 on its way to the moon. Lovell was about to say yes, then he saw a hand shoot up from the audience and slowly give the thumbs down sign. It was his wife, Marilyn. Interestingly, there is a mountain on the moon named after her in 2017, as it was proposed by Lovell in the 60s. Apparently she didn't want to lose her husband, especially since he's already been to two missions by that time. The mobile quarantine facility was a specially designed trailer used by NASA during the Apollo missions to quarantine astronauts returning from lunar missions. It was a converted Airstream trailer, equipped with living and sleeping quarters, as well as communication equipment for for the astronauts to stay in touch with their families and even converse with President Nixon after the Apollo 11 mission. The purpose of the quarantine was to prevent the potential spread of any contagions from the moon, although the likelihood of such contagions was considered very low. The quarantine facility maintained a lower pressure inside and filtered any air vented to ensure containment. Ultimately, the quarantine requirement was eliminated after Apollo 14 when it was confirmed that the moon was sterile and there was no risk of lunar contagions, rendering the facility facilities unnecessary. Sleeping on the moon refers to the challenges the Apollo 11 astronauts faced when trying to rest during the Apollo lunar missions. The livable space within the Apollo lunar module measured only 160 cubic feet. While this might initially seem sufficient for two individuals, it quickly became evident that the space was cramped. It was filled with bulky lunar EVA suits, life support systems, collected rocks from the surface, 
and various other necessities for a lunar expedition, coupled with the constant noise from the environmental control system and the streaming sunlight through the window, the module was far from an ideal environment for rest or relaxation. Nevertheless, the lunar module prioritized functionality over comfort. Its primary purpose was to facilitate lunar landings, with the key design consideration being minimizing weight. This emphasis on weight savings meant that certain features, such as bundles of wires, were not concealed behind panels to avoid adding unnecessary mass. Plumbing remained exposed, circuit breakers were left uncovered, and the vehicle's configuration accommodated components like fuel tanks. Compounding the discomfort, the lunar missions were not synchronized with the astronauts' natural sleep cycles. Every aspect of the mission timeline revolved around the landing, resulting in sleep periods occurring at unconventional times. I'm so glad I never went to the moon. Robert Goddard mocked. When Robert Goddard, scientist who created the first liquid fueled rocket, published his work in 1919, he was ridiculed for his belief man could reach the moon. The New York Times even mocked his understanding of basic physics. They later published a correction the day after the launch of Apollo 11. Reflectors and lasers play a crucial role in lunar laser ranging, which has been ongoing since 1969. Retro reflectors left on the Moon by Apollo missions are utilized to measure the distance between Earth and the Moon with exceptional precision. The experiment facilitated studies on the Earth-Moon system tested the laws of physics and provided insights into lunar geology and dynamics. The lunar laser ranging has also contributed to testing Einstein's general theory of relativity and monitoring gravitational forces. It has applications beyond lunar studies, including monitoring plate tectonics, ocean circulation and calibrating satellite tracking systems. Moonbows Unlike rainbows which are formed by sunlight, moonbows are created by the reflection of the moon's light. They are often much fainter than rainbows due to the weaker intensity of moon moonlight compared to sunlight, making them challenging to see with a naked eye. However, they can be captured beautifully in non-exposure photographs, revealing their subtle colors. Moonbows are particularly likely to occur in foggy conditions, where there is more moisture in the air to refract the moonlight. Moondiver is a proposed lunar mission concept by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. The mission seeks to understand the formation and evolution of the Moon's secondary lava crust by investigating a 100-meter-wide opening about 100 meters deep in Mare Tranquillitatis. By analyzing the exposed bedrock layers, the mission also aims to determine whether the pit may be a collapsed section of a lunar lava tube. The Axel rover, originally conceptualized in 1999, is designed to descend into the pit using a winch system and carry out scientific measurements using instruments such as cameras, an alpha particle X-ray spectrometer and a multispectral microimager. A selenelian, also known as a selenohelion, or horizontal eclipse, occurs when both the Sun and an eclipsed Moon are visible simultaneously. This phenomenon can only be observed just before sunset or just after sunrise, when both celestial bodies appear just above opposite horizons at nearly opposite points in the sky. Typically, observers situated on high mountain ridges, experiencing false sunrise or false sunset during a total lunar eclipse, can witness a selenohelion. Despite the Moon being fully within the Earth's umbra during a selenelion, both the Moon and the Sun can be seen in the sky due to atmospheric refraction, which causes each body to appear higher in the sky than their true geometric positions relative to the planet. Moonrise or Moonset Atmospheric Distortion Moon may appear more yellowish near the horizon due to the scattering of blue light by Earth's atmosphere. When the Moon is near the horizon, its light must pass through more layers of atmosphere, which scatters shorter wavelengths and leaves longer wavelengths such as yellow, orange and red. This atmospheric effect is similar to the orangey-red appearance of the sun or sky at sunrise or sunset. It's also the reason why the Moon can appear red during deep partial or total lunar eclipse. A permanently shadowed crater is a depression found on the Moon and other celestial bodies within which lies a point that is always in darkness. These craters are typically found at high latitudes near the poles of the celestial bodies, which are characterized by very small axial tilts. The Moon has around 324 known permanently shadowed regions. To me, these regions are of particular interest due to their ability to preserve water ice which can be converted into essential resources like drinkable water, breathable oxygen and rocket propellant for future colonization missions. Those craters must be perfect shelters from the Sun's radiation. Theia remnants in Earth The remnants of Theia, the protoplanet believed to have collided with Earth and formed the Moon, 
may still exist deep inside the Earth, specifically within two massive regions called Large Low Shear Velocity Provinces, or LLSVPs, located at the bottom of the mantle, just above the Earth's core. These LLSVPs are characterized by slower seismic shear wave propagation, extending laterally for thousands of miles and possibly reaching heights of up to 1,000 kilometers. The presence of Theia remnants within the LLSVPs could explain certain geological phenomena such as hotspot formation and volcanic activity around the globe. Moreover, the isotopic ratios found in certain types of lava associated with the LLSVPs suggest that some of the material at the mantle or core boundary has remained relatively unchanged since the formation of the Earth. So, Theia's leftovers could essentially be the Earth's mantle stash. Who knew our planet was hiding intergalactic souvenirs? Trypophobic images. There's a Reddit user who shared some images which feature peculiar and weird patterns of uncertain origin found on the Lunar Orbiter film. However, I think that the artifacts seen in the Lunar Orbiter images from the 1960s are likely due to issues with the film development process. Because the orbiter had film cameras that took photos of the moon, developed them internally and then transmitted them back to Earth, any inconsistencies or defects in the developing fluid could result in artifacts appearing on the images. This could include uneven development caused by the developing fluid not flowing evenly, leading to areas of the image not developing properly. Additionally, film stock degradation, possibly due to fungal growth or improper storage, could contribute to these artifacts. While some commenters have speculated about more exotic explanations such as alien mold or astrological fungi infestation, the most plausible explanation remains related to the film development process and subsequent storage conditions. Meteorites from the Moon these meteorites are fascinating because they provide us with samples of lunar material without the need for a manned lunar mission. They are formed when meteoroids impact the lunar surface at extremely high velocities, causing lunar rocks to be ejected into space. Some of these ejected rocks eventually fall to Earth as meteorites. Identifying lunar meteorites can be challenging, but they often have fusion crusts from melting during their passage through Earth's atmosphere. Additionally, they contain certain isotopes or nuclides that are only produced by reactions reactions with cosmic rays outside Earth's atmosphere. This cosmic ray exposure is a key indicator that a rock is a meteorite. As of December the 31st of 2023, there are 649 recognized lunar meteorites. What's interesting is that lunar meteorites are believed to come from relatively small craters on the Moon, with estimates suggesting impacts as small as a few hundred meters in diameter. The majority of lunar meteorites have been discovered in hot deserts such as those in North Africa, particularly Morocco and Oman. The desert environments in these regions provide favorable conditions for spotting meteorites due to the lack of vegetation and minimal surface disturbance, making them easier to recognize against the landscape. These meteorites are typically found on the icy surface of Antarctic ice fields, where they stand out against the uniform background of ice. The cold temperatures help preserve the meteorites, and the slow movement of the ice can concentrate meteorites in certain areas, making them easier to find during systematic searches. Did you hear about the lunar meteorite? that tried to hide in Antarctica. It thought it could chill out there. The lunar effect refers to the purported correlation between specific stages of the lunar cycle and behavior or physiological changes in living beings on Earth, including humans. While this concept has been extensively studied, literature reviews and meta-analysis have consistently found no significant correlation between the lunar cycle and human biology or behavior. Interestingly, while there is little evidence of lunar effects on humans, some marine animals, such as certain corals and worms, demonstrate synchronization of behaviors such as spawning with lunar cycles. For example, corals like Dipsostria speciosa tend to synchronize spawning around the last quarter moon of the lunar cycle. The synchronization may be triggered by external cues related to the presence or amount of moonlight, as these animals possess light-sensitive proteins known as cryptochromes. In contrast, studies examining human behaviors and phenomena such as fertility, birth rates, blood loss, epilepsy, law and order, motorcycle fatalities, and even stock market returns have failed to establish a significant link to lunar phases. Despite this, the belief in lunar effects persists, possibly due to illusory correlation, the perception of an association that does not actually exist. LCRT The Lunar Crater Radio Telescope is a proposed ultra-long wavelength radio telescope in a crater that would be situated on the far side of the Moon. 
This unique location offers several advantages over Earth-based and Earth-orbiting telescopes. One key advantage is the ability to observe the universe at wavelengths greater than 10 meters, which are typically blocked by Earth's ionosphere. The proposed LCRT would involve deploying a 1-kilometer diameter wire mesh using wall-climbing do axle robots within a free 5-kilometer diameter lunar crater on the far side. This wire mesh would form a spherical cap reflector, creating a large, field aperture radio telescope with a diameter of 1 km, making it the largest of its kind in the solar system. I think the LCRT represents quite a groundbreaking endeavor, but I heavily doubt it is possible to create LCRT within the next 10 years, but never say never. It's time for the greater depths of the Tier 5. Moon rings like a bell. The phenomenon of the moon ringing like a bell refers to the seismic activity detected during the Apollo missions in the 1960s and 1970s. When the lunar modules of Apollo missions were landed on the moon's surface, they were equipped with seismometers, which recorded data indicating that the moon reverberated like a bell after being struck by a large object, such as a piece of space debris or a meteorite impact. This discovery suggested that the moon's interior is not completely solid, but rather has a complex structure with different layers, much like Earths. What's interesting about this is the initial misinterpretation of the data by conspiracy theorists. Some individuals concluded from the prolonged vibrations that the moon must be hollow, leading to the development of the hollow moon conspiracy theory. However, further scientific analysis revealed that the moon's composition and lack of significant water content contribute to the prolonged vibrations rather than indicating hollowness. Buzz Aldrin's Depression and Alcoholism Buzz Aldrin battled depression and alcohol addiction following his historic journey on Apollo 11. After returning to Earth, he struggled with the immense pressure of living up to the expectations placed upon him and the lack of purpose in his life. This led him to drink excessively and engage in extramarital affairs, causing strain on his marriage. Despite taking on new roles, such as becoming commandant of the test pilot school at Edwards Air Force Base, Aldrin continued to grapple with feelings of hopelessness and despair. He eventually sought treatment for both his physical and mental health issues. Aldrin's public admission of his personal struggles, especially in the conservative climate of the early 1970s, was considered bold and groundbreaking. He received support from various quarters and became involved in advocacy work for mental health. He found a reliable support network through Alcoholics Anonymous, which led to a member assisting him in securing a job as a Cadillac dealer in Beverly Hills. Unfortunately, Aldrin's innate honesty hindered his success as a salesman, as he often spent his time at work signing autographs and entertaining customers with tales from his NASA days. His lowest point occurred when, in a drunken fit of rage, Aldrin was arrested for breaking down the door of his girlfriend's apartment. Frustrated with himself for reverting to destructive behavior, he made the pivotal decision to quit drinking for good in October of 1978. Despite facing further challenges and heartache, Aldrin managed to find renewed purpose in his life. He became involved in assisting recovering alcoholics, pursued writing as an author, and continued his contributions to the American space program. Armstrong Daughter's Bracelet In a nutshell, in 1962, Neil Armstrong Armstrong's two-year-old daughter Karen died from a brain tumor. Near the end of the movie First Man, which was released in 2018, Armstrong is depicted as dropping his daughter's bracelet into a lunar crater. However, the veracity of this event is uncertain, as it is described as a bit of a dramatic license taken by the filmmakers. It was mentioned that the astronauts carried personal property kits, or PPKs for short, containing items of personal significance but Armstrong's manifest for his PPK has never been seen. Additionally, Armstrong's trip to leave the bracelet at Little West Crater was not part of the scheduled mission plan. Not going to lie, this moment from the movie almost got me emotional. Procedure 17 is a protocol followed by astronaut Michael Collins during the Apollo 11 mission. When a problem arose with the temperature of the coolant in the Columbia spacecraft, Mission Control instructed Collins to implement Environmental Control System Malfunction Procedure 17. However, instead of strictly following the protocol, he flicked the switch on the malfunctioning system from automatic to manual and back to automatic again, while continuing with normal tasks and monitoring the temperature. His ability to effectively troubleshoot the problem and resolve it without strictly adhering to protocol showcases the flexibility and resourcefulness required of astronauts in high-stakes situations. How about that? 
Solar eclipses on the Moon occur when the Earth passes in front of the Sun, blocking its light from reaching certain parts of the lunar surface. These solar eclipses are primarily visible on the near side of the Moon and smaller portions of the far side, where Earth is visible during librations. Unlike some moons or satellites orbiting other celestial bodies, solar eclipses on the Moon are relatively rare. The duration of lunar solar eclipses can vary, with the longest lasting up to five and a half hours in one area. Unlike on Earth, where eclipses start and end at different locations, all lunar solar eclipses begin in the westernmost parts of the near side and end in the easternmost parts. Making love on the Moon The entry refers to the audacious and infamous act carried out by Thad Roberts, a former NASA intern who stole 101 grams of lunar rocks from a NASA facility in 2002 with the intention of having intercourse on them. Roberts, along with his girlfriend and another accomplice, used their official IDs to gain access to the facility, stole the rocks and later scattered them on a bed to fulfill their unconventional fantasy. However, this act not only resulted in the contamination of the lunar samples, rendering them useless to the scientific community, but also led to the destruction of three decades worth of handwritten research notes by a NASA scientist. Roberts was eventually caught, sentenced to more than eight years in prison and became known for his pursuits in academics, particularly in the field of physics and philosophy, after his release. What a crazy story, yikes! Damaged circuit breaker It occurred while Aldrin was moving inside the lunar module cabin potentially jeopardizing their ability to lift off from the Moon's surface. The concern was that without the circuit breaker, they might be stranded on the Moon. However, the ingenious solution came from a non-conductive tip of a dural felt tip pen, which was used to activate the switch, allowing them to take off. Genius, what else can I say? Neil Armstrong was Muslim. Basically, there's been a hoax from the early 1980s that falsely claimed Neil Armstrong converted to Islam after hearing the call to prayer while walking on the moon. This rumor circulated in various countries, including Indonesia, Egypt and Malaysia. It even led to a song being written about Armstrong's supposed conversion. However, the US State Department issued a statement clarifying that Armstrong had not converted to Islam. This hoax resurfaced occasionally for the next few decades due to the confusion, partly stemming from the similarity between the name of the country Lebanon, which has a Muslim majority, and Armstrong's residence in Lebanon, Ohio. Galileo dismissed tides Galileo's dismissal of the notion that the moon influenced tides as childish and occult is quite intriguing, especially given the historical context and his own scientific principles. According to his theory, the motion of the Earth, particularly its rotation and orbit, created a sloshing effect in the oceans, leading to the ebb and flow of tides. Apollo 11 Missing Tapes The entry refers to the original slow-scan television, or SSTV for short, telecast recorded in its raw format on telemetry data tapes during the historic first moon landing in 1969. These tapes were crucial backups intended to record all transmitted data, including video and telemetry. However, they were subsequently lost over time. The search for these missing tapes was sparked in the early 2000s when several still photographs surfaced showing visually superior raw SSTV transmissions on ground station monitors. Despite efforts by a team of retired NASA employees and contractors, the tapes could not be located. It was later determined that the tapes were likely erased and reused by NASA in the early 1980s due to a severe data tape shortage. The Apollo 11 tapes are so elusive they make Bigfoot seem easy to find. Spent gunpowder is likened to the smell of the moon as experienced by astronauts. This comparison was made by NASA to convey the unique aroma astronauts have reported encountering during spacewalks. The smell of spent gunpowder suggests a somewhat sulfurous, burnt scent. By collaborating with fragrance experts like Steven Pierce of Omega Ingredients, NASA seeks to simulate the sensory experiences astronauts might encounter during space missions, including the distinct aroma of outer space. Let them cook. Dinosaurs saw volcanoes. Recent data from NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter suggests that lunar lava flowed much more recently than previously thought, possibly less than 100 million years ago. The discovery of 70 similar volcanic patches on the Moon's surface indicates that volcanic activity was widespread relatively recently in geological terms. These findings challenge previous beliefs that the Moon's volcanic activity ceased around a billion years ago. For dinosaurs, it must have truly been a roaring success in lunar observation back then. 
solar eclipse of March the 20th of 2015. The European Union's solar power capacity is approximately 90 gigawatts, and during the solar eclipse it was anticipated that production could temporarily decline by up to 34 gigawatts, depending on sky clarity. However, the actual decrease was less than expected, with Germany experiencing a 13 gigawatt drop due to overcast conditions. Nevertheless, this event marked the first time a solar eclipse had a significant impact on the power system, prompting the electricity sector to implement measures to mitigate its effects. The power gradient indicating the rate of change in power was estimated to range from a decrease of 400 megawatts per minute to an increase of 700 megawatts per minute. Additionally, areas in the Netherlands, Belgium and Denmark could experience up to 85% obscuration. Furthermore, a decrease in temperature by 3 degrees Celsius and a reduction in wind power due to decreased wind speeds of 0.7 meters per second were also observed. Project Diana was a groundbreaking experiment conducted by the US Army Signal Corps in 1946. Named after the Roman moon goddess Diana, it aimed to bounce radar signals off the moon and receive the reflections. This experiment marked the inception of radar astronomy that demonstrated the feasibility of using the moon as a passive reflector for transmitting radio signals between different points on Earth. Project Diana showcased that terrestrial radio signals could penetrate the ionosphere opening up possibilities for radio communications beyond Earth for space probes and human explorers. This experiment laid the groundwork for radar mapping of Venus and other nearby planets and played a crucial role in the development of the US space program. Soviet pennants were sphere-shaped objects carried by the Luna 2 spacecraft on its mission to the Moon in 1959. These pennants were engraved with the letters USSR and the launch date in Cyrillic. They were detonated just before the spacecraft's impact on the lunar surface, releasing pentagonal shields in all directions. The pennants served both a symbolic and scientific purpose, representing the Soviet Union's achievement in space exploration and also providing data on the impact event itself. Earth tectonics tidal effect. This theory posits that as the Earth rotates beneath the Moon, the Moon's gravity slightly pulls the Earth's surface layer back in the opposite direction. George Moore and R. C. Bostrom presented evidence in 1973 suggesting a general westward drift of Earth's lithosphere relative to the mantle, based on observations of subduction zones. Advocates of this theory argue that tidal forces could be a driving force for plate tectonics. They suggest that this may explain why Venus and Mars, which lack significant tidal effects due to the absence of large moons or moons with sufficient mass, do not exhibit plate tectonics like Earth does. However, the debate remains open, with some research pointed out discrepancies in the theory. For example, the observation that many plates are moving north and eastward challenges the idea of a purely westward influence from lunar tidal forces. Moon's explosive encounter. This encounter, which involved a space rock approximately 160 miles long and weighing about 25,000 trillion tons, occurred at a staggering speed of around 52,000 miles per hour. The collision led to the creation of a massive crater on the lunar near side, known as Imbrium Basin, which is about 710 miles wide. The Moon, which was much closer to Earth at the time, would have appeared significantly larger in the sky and the impact would likely have caused a spectacular display visible from Earth. Moon had thick atmosphere. This ancient atmosphere existed around 3 to 4 billion years ago. It was likely created by volcanic activity, with gases emitted by lunar volcanoes accumulating faster than they could escape into space. Lasting for approximately 70 million years, this atmosphere had a density about 2% that of Earth's current atmosphere. Earth is a shield for the Moon's near side. This is actually not true. The far side of the Moon indeed exhibits more visible craters compared to the near side, and this phenomenon has intrigued scientists for some time. Initially, it was hypothesized that the Earth acted as a shield for the near side, protecting it from asteroid impacts. However, further analysis revealed that the theory had significant flaws as the Earth covers only a small portion of the Moon's sky. A more plausible explanation emerged when scientists discovered that the crust of the near side is thinner than that of the far side. 
This discrepancy led to a fascinating observation. While both sides of the Moon received similar numbers of asteroid impacts, the thinner crust of the near side allowed for the release of lava, which filled the craters and formed lunar maria. In contrast, the thicker crust of the far side prevented the penetration of asteroid impacts, resulting in the preservation of craters and valleys. Also, as the Moon cooled faster than Earth, it became tidally locked. The proximity to Earth heated the near side, keeping its crust thin and young, while the far side cooled down, developing a thicker, older crust. It's finally time for the deepest tier 6. Moon is a spaceship. The spaceship Moon hypothesis posits that the Moon is an ancient spaceship, suggesting that its interior was filled with fuel, materials, machinery and possibly even housed a civilization. This idea was proposed by Soviet researchers Mikhail Vasin and Alexander Sherbakov, who speculated that the Moon's shallow craters could be evidence of meteors breaking through its hull. The theory emerged during a time when the Soviet Union was actively promoting ideas like ancient astronauts to challenge Western scientific and religious beliefs regarding space. However, despite being members of the Soviet Academy of Sciences, their hypothesis did not gain much traction within the scientific community. I think it was basically a debate between who makes the craziest statement to ridicule one another. Buried on the Moon Eugene Merle Shoemaker, a prominent American geologist and planetary scientist, contributed significantly to our understanding of impact craters both on Earth and other celestial bodies. Following his death in a car accident in 1997, some of his ashes were carried to the Moon aboard the Lunar Prospector spacecraft. The symbolic gesture made Shoemaker the first and only person to have their remains buried on a celestial body other than Earth. Aldrin's family Buzz Aldrin's family history, as revealed in his memoir Return to Earth, is marked by struggles with mental health, depression and self unaliving. His mother, Marion Moon, passed away from an overdose of sleeping pills, though officially it was listed as a heart attack at the family's request. Additionally, Aldrin's maternal grandfather had died by sulfonaliving years before. If Moon disappears Hypothetically, if the Moon were to suddenly vanish, it is believed the consequences for Earth would be significant and wide-ranging. Firstly, the tides driven by the Moon's gravitational pull would be drastically reduced, impacting coastal ecosystems that rely on tidal movements for their survival. This could lead to disruptions in marine life and potentially cause mass extinctions. Furthermore, the absence of the Moon would affect animal behavior, particularly nocturnal predators who rely on moonlight for hunting. Without this light source, prey populations could thrive, leading to imbalances in ecosystems and potential extinctions of certain predatory species. Perhaps, most alarmingly, the Earth's seasons would undergo dramatic changes. You see, the Moon plays a crucial role in stabilizing Earth's tilt, which in turn determines our seasons. Without the Moon's influence, Earth's tilt could become unstable, resulting in extreme weather patterns and even ice ages. If the Moon disappeared, we'd have to rename lunar landings to just landings, which doesn't quite have the same ring to it. I'll see myself out. Bacteria reacting to Moon There are certain bacteria such as Vibrio fischeri and Vibrio harvii possess a fascinating ability to communicate with each other through a process called quorum sensing. During the day, the squid buries itself in sediment to avoid predators. However, when it comes out at night to hunt, it risks casting a shadow under the moonlight, potentially exposing itself to predators. To counteract this, the squid has a specialized light organ containing Vibrio fischeri bacteria which emit light. The squid uses this light to match the intensity of moonlight hitting its back, effectively camouflaging itself and avoiding detection by predators. Evolution doesn't fail to amaze me. Darwin would be proud. The NORAD incident is a false alarm incident that occurred in 1960 at the North American Air Defense Command in Colorado Springs. The incident occurred when the computer system at NORAD erroneously warned with 99.9% .9 certainty that the Soviets had launched a full-scale missile attack against the North America. This false alarm was later attributed to the ballistic missile early warning system at one airbase in Greenland misinterpreting the rising moon over Norway as a missile attack from Siberia. Quicksands was a concern for NASA during the Apollo missions to the Moon. Scientists worried that the lunar dust might behave like quicksand and swallow astronauts or spacecraft. This concern stemmed from the theory proposed by Thomas Gold in 1955 
suggesting that the lunar surface was covered in a fine rocky powder due to meteorite collisions and solar radiation. To address this concern, NASA conducted research on the lunar surface bearing strength, sending surveyor probes to investigate. The Blood Moon prophecy, propagated by Christian preachers John Hagee and Mark Blitz, centered around a series of four consecutive lunar eclipses known as a tetrad, occurring in 2014 and 2015. These eclipses coincided with Jewish holidays and were interpreted as signs of the end time as described in the Bible. The prophecy finds its roots in biblical passages which mention celestial phenomena preceding significant events. While Hagee's book Four Blood Moons, it didn't specify any particular end-time event but linked previous tetrads with significant historical events in Jewish and Israeli history. Despite media attention and popular interest, critics pointed out that not all eclipses in the tetrad were visible in Israel casting doubt on the interpretation. Additionally, the frequency of tetrads varies over centuries and only a few have coincided with Jewish feasts. The Man in the Moon refers to pareidolic images of a human face, head or body recognized in the disk of the full moon across various cultures. These images are based on the appearance of dark areas and lighter colored highlands of the lunar surface. There are numerous cultural interpretations and mythologies surrounding the Man in the Moon ranging from punishment for crimes to figures from Norse, Chinese, Haida, Japanese and Vietnamese mythologies. The lunar horizon glow is a fascinating phenomenon caused by dust particles in the Moon's thin atmosphere. These dust particles, kicked off from the lunar surface, stay in the atmosphere for about three hours. They scatter light, producing a glow near the horizon during lunar sunset. The explanation is that positively charged particles on the day side of the Moon get repelled kilometers high into the atmosphere by ultraviolet rays from the Sun. While on the night side, the dust becomes negatively charged by electrons from the solar wind, launching particles to even higher altitudes. The cycle of charging and launching dust particles contributes to the glow phenomenon. Despite its ethereal beauty, the lunar horizon glow also poses challenges for scientific instruments placed on the lunar surface, such as the degradation of laser retroreflectors and the interference with experiments like lunar ejecta and meteorites, or LEAM for short, whose instrument was designed to detect high-velocity particles. The Columbia Space Gun, as depicted in Jules Verne's novel From the Earth to the Moon, is a colossal cannon designed by the Baltimore Gun Club with the ambitious goal of launching a projectile to the moon. What's intriguing about it is Verne's attempt to calculate the requirements for such a cannon despite the limited empirical data available at the time. Although some of his figures were remarkably accurate, the concept ultimately proved impractical for safe human space travel. However, in reality, the person's body would have turned into mush at such acceleration from the Columbiad. The the novel not only explores the technical challenges of building such a cannon, but also delves into the adventurous spirit of exploration, as exemplified by the character of Michel Ardan, a French adventurer who proposes to travel to the moon aboard the projectile. As I found, the story's influence extends beyond literature, inspiring various adaptations in opera, film and even roller coaster attractions. Perfect Old Folks Home The entry refers to the perfect old folks home suggested by one of the Reddit users. The concept imagines a retirement facility on the moon, leveraging the unique environment and technology available there. With only one-sixth of Earth's gravity, residents would experience relief from conditions like arthritis and muscular deterioration. The facility would feature advanced environmental controls ensuring the perfect oxygen levels without the need for air tanks. Residents could engage in activities like gardening or raising fish as part of terraforming efforts, offering both purpose and leisure. Cutting-edge technologies such as holograms and haptic suits, gloves, would enable residents to virtually visit loved ones in their living rooms. The giant railgun, typically used for sending shuttles to Mars, could serve as a dual purpose of launching deceased individuals' bodies into deep space as per their wills. The thread also humorously explores various aspects and implications of the concept, such as the potential for old folks' brothels, catering to space travelers and concerns about the impact of launching bodies into space. Astronauts warmed up the Moon. This discovery stemmed from temperature data collected during the 1970s moon landings. 
particularly from heat flow experiments conducted during the Apollo 15 and Apollo 17 missions. The astronauts drilled holes into the lunar surface and inserted temperature probes to measure heat at various depths. Subsequent analysis revealed that shallower probes experienced greater temperature increases, indicating that the warming originated from the lunar surface itself rather than external factors like casing or natural phenomena. The research indicates that the movement of rovers and walking on the Moon disturbed darker lunar dust known as regolith. Because darker substances absorb more light, the presence of this darker dust likely contributed to the heating of the Moon's surface, which ultimately led to the heating of the probes inserted. Dinosaurs on the Moon is a concept that stems from speculation about whether dinosaur fossils could potentially exist on the Moon. The idea suggests that when the asteroid that led to the extinction of dinosaurs struck the Earth, it could have launched dinosaur remains into space, some of which may have landed on the Moon. This theory has been popularized for various channels, including social media platforms like TikTok, where scientist Hank Green's explanation gained significant attention. While it's an intriguing concept, there is no direct evidence to support the existence of dinosaur fossils on the Moon. However, I think the notion serves as a fascinating, thought-provoking example of how significant events in Earth's history could have far-reaching implications even beyond our planet. The sodium tail of the Moon is a phenomenon discovered in 1998 by scientists from Boston University during the Leonid meteor shower. This tail, composed of sodium atoms, stretches hundreds of thousands of kilometers in length. It's too faint to be observed by the naked eye, but can be detected using specialized equipment. The sodium tail is formed as a result of various processes on the Moon's surface. Atomic sodium is continually released as fine dust due to factors such as photon-stimulated desorption solar wind sputtering and meteorite impacts. Solar radiation pressure then accelerates these sodium atoms away from the Sun, forming an elongated tail in the antisolar direction. Electrostatic lofting refers to a phenomenon where dust particles on planetary surfaces such as the Moon or Mars become charged due to solar radiation and then repel or attract each other based on their electrostatic charges. This process causes the dust particles to lift off the surface and remain suspended in the air for some time. On the Moon, for example, this phenomenon contributes to the formation of a dust atmosphere, which poses significant challenges for lunar missions. Lunar dust is very hazardous. Unlike the soft, organic material that collects on furniture on Earth, lunar dust is laser-sharp, made of inorganic stone and powdered glass, formed by micrometeorites impacting the Moon's surface at high velocities over millions of years. This abrasive, toxic grit poses significant problems for astronauts and equipment during lunar exploration. Why, you may ask? Well, firstly, lunar dust is pervasive and insidious, getting into everything. During the Apollo missions, astronauts found it getting in their eyes, throats, spacesuits and equipment. Its sharp edges scratched visors, foul attachments and seals, and made spacesuits uncomfortably hot due to decreased reflectivity. Moreover, the dust is electrically charged due to the absence of an atmosphere and constant bombardment by solar radiation, leading to electrostatic levitation and the formation of a tenuous atmosphere of moving dust particles. Furthermore, it scours surfaces, jams mechanisms and interferes with electronics. Seems like lunar dust is like glitter. Lunar swirls are intriguing features found on the Moon's surface, characterized by their high albedo, sinuous shapes and optical immaturity resembling relatively young regolith. These swirls often coincide with regions of the Moon's magnetic field that are relatively strong, despite the Moon lacking an active core dynamo to generate its own magnetic field. The formation of lunar swirls is still a topic of debate, with three main models proposed – the cometary impact model, the solar wind shielding model and the dust transport model. The cometary impact model suggests that the high albedo of the swirls is caused by cometary impacts which expose fresh material and redeposit fine, scoured material in discrete deposits while also magnetizing near-surface materials for hypervelocity gas collisions and micro-impacts. The solar wind shielding model proposes that swirls are formed because lighter colored regolith is protected from the solar wind due to a magnetic anomaly, preserving their albedo over time. The dust transport model suggests that weak electric fields created by interaction between crustal magnetic anomalies and solar wind plasma could attract or repel electrically charged fine dust, causing them to accumulate and form bright swirl patterns. Further studies and missions are being planned to understand the nature of these enigmatic lunar features. Why did the lunar swirl get a job as a tour guide? Because it knew all the magnetic attractions on the Moon. 
Transient lunar phenomena refer to short-lived changes in the light, color or appearance on the surface of the Moon. They have been observed for over a thousand years and documented by various witnesses, including astronomers and amateur observers. The transient lunar phenomena, or TLPs, encompass a range of phenomena from foggy patches to alterations in the lunar landscape, and they have been classified into categories such as gaseous events, colorations, brightenings and darkenings. Despite their long history of observation, TLPs remain controversial due to their transient nature and the lack of reproducibility in many reports. While some TLPs have been associated with known geological processes such as outgassing and impact cratering, the frequency and origin of these events are still debated. Tardigrades on the Moon The entry refers to the Israeli Bershit spacecraft crashing on the lunar surface. The payload of the spacecraft included a few thousand tardigrades. Tardigrades are microscopic organisms known for their remarkable resilience to extreme conditions, including high radiation, desiccation and wide temperature ranges. They can survive in environments ranging from near absolute zero to over 400 Kelvin and can withstand the vacuum of outer space. The crash landing of the spacecraft raised the possibility that some tardigrades may have survived the impact, which would make them the fourth animal species to reach the moon's surface after humans, fruit flies and silkworms. Research on tardigrades has demonstrated their ability to undergo cryptobiosis, a state in which their metabolism is reduced to less than 0.01% of normal, allowing them to survive extreme conditions. Recent studies, including one in which tardigrades were fired into sand targets at high speeds, suggest that they can withstand impacts and shock pressures up to certain limits. That must have been a successful contamination of the lunar surface. But who knows, maybe they didn't survive. Moon's sudden movement effect This phenomenon has been discussed on Reddit. Multiple people have observed the Moon to move in a sudden, mechanical manner, which is somewhat intriguing. While there are various interpretations and explanations offered by individuals in the discussion, such as atmospheric effects, eye anomalies or even the presence of cloaked spacecraft, the exact cause remains elusive. It's noteworthy that while some individuals report witnessing such movements, there is no widespread documentation or mass observation of similar events suggesting that it could be attributed to individual perceptual experiences. Alternatively, an eye anomaly could account for the perceived movement of the Moon. On a few occasions, I've experienced sudden eye tremors, which can be quite disconcerting. Had I been observing the Moon during such episodes, it might have appeared as though the Moon shifted, despite no actual movement occurring. Moreover, since these tremors don't entail any physical sensation, it's easy to mistake them for external motion, particularly when there are minimal visual cues aside from the Moon itself in the night sky. Well, I don't know what's going on, maybe I should go to a doctor.